So, we came out to the Jeep this morning and it's making some weird noises. I don't know if it's an exhaust leak or what exactly is happening. Um, maybe you guys can hear it. You hear that? Is that an exhaust leak or? It's making this really high pitch whistle we're sound. We're hoping you guys can help us diagnose this. See if you listen again. You hear it? Like the weirdest thing it literally yeah, just started just, doing that it's just whistling i don't know you guys we just we figured at least one of our subscribers should be able to figure out what this noise is and help us to diagnose it so kevin and i just got finished with crawling for reed but now we're back in knoxville tennessee at rockier 4x4 because we have something really, really big plant, and we've been alluding to it for weeks now. I'm super excited. I'll give you one second to guess what we're here for. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'll show you. Now for everyone who thought that we were going supercharger, I hate to disappoint you, but what you're looking at here isn't a supercharger, it's the all new Prodigy Turbo Kit for the JL. It's an all-inclusive kit that comes with your tuner, your intercooler, new injectors, it comes with everything you could possibly need, including, of course, the turbo. As you can see, everything is labeled literally to the T. But if you're wondering where the actual exhaust piping is, Kevin and I actually sent that off to go get it ceramic coated to help minimize on the heat it'll be producing in our engine bay, which isn't something that's technically needed, but it's something that Kevin and I really wanted to do as a preventative measure, just to make sure that we keep everything as cool as we possibly can while we're, of course, driving down the highway, towing our new Razor, and of course, while we're off-road, climbing up rocks. We love turbos, we love turbocharged vehicles, and it's something we've always wanted to do. So we're hoping that by installing this on our JL, we'll be able to prove not only how well this turbo kit can perform both on-road and off-road, but also show you just how easy of an install it actually is. Would you look at her? Look at her. She's so spoiled. She's so spoiled. Now, for those of you who are curious about the ceramic coating, this is what your final product looks like. This will help to reduce the surface temperatures and keep all of that heat internal to the system. And as you can see, we got it done on all of our exhaust piping. That way we can make sure that that heat that's getting let off by the turbo and the exhaust doesn't damage anything else and keep our temperatures as cool as we possibly can. Now, before we actually get started with the installation, something I really wanted to show you guys, and this goes hand in hand with how easy this install is. So this Prodigy Turbo Kit comes with this little booklet. And I kid you not, it is a step-by-step -step in full color. In full color. Of how to. This, this is a very, very detailed book. This is hands down the most in-depth an easy to follow installation guide or instruction or anything we've ever had for anything we've for, ever put on our it, Jeep ever or yeah, any of our vehicles. It honestly. is really, it is really, really good. I mean, even showing you an image of the retaining clip. You can not really know anything for the most part about what you're doing and still do it because of this booklet that comes with this Prodigy Turbo, turbo Kit. kit. <laughs> we so got a turbo. We'll be going over the installation, of course. I'm gonna yeah, kind of give you a general guide. Kevin, this is going to be your it's absolute, yeah, this is your Bible. And the first thing you gotta do is get your PCM unlocked. PCM the, has to be taken completely out and it has to be sent off so you can get it unlocked and of course you can tune it. Yeah, so we're gonna send it out to HP tuners. They're gonna unlock it, get it back to us and we'll get the Prodigy file downloaded for our base tune. Oh my God, this is gonna be so I'm awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> So this little guy, AKA the power control module is gonna get sent out so it can be unlocked and we can put the new programming to it. Send it out to HD tuners. Yep. Ironically enough, you might've noticed that the easiest way to get that out is to remove the factory intake system, which is the next step. Removing the factory intake system and preparing the coolant system, which basically means draining that sucker dry and removing a couple of choice hoses. Yes. <laughs> So what we're doing is we're dropping the lower skid so that when we drain the coolant, we actually can uh, not make a ton of a mess. It's gonna go right into the bucket instead of hitting the skid and splashing all over the place.
That's shooter status right there. That is the coolest little tool. I swear. For those pan the clips. Yeah. I don't know where that's been all my life. <laughs> I'm just pulling the tires off so we can lower the Jeep all the way on the ground so we don't uh, have to be working on it on a ladder and stuff the whole time, so. Now with that all out of the way, including, you might have noticed, the actual grill for the vehicle, next up is removing the intake plenum and the intake manifold. Now while they do that though, I'm gonna have Kevin here show you what came out of not only our catch can, but also the air filter, which we have never replaced. I don't think we've ever even I've, I've shaken it out. It out. Once. once. I think at Barnwell. How many wheeling trips are uh, stuffed into that filter right now? I mean, all of them. Let's see how. Oh God. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is just barely. <laughs> yeah, we should probably do this outside. Yeah, let's go outside. <laughs> oh, it's. It's oh god, yeah, let's go outside. Okay, let's try this again. Oh gosh. And I'm still getting good gas mileage and stuff. Definitely needs to be replaced, but I would say that the stock system... That stock intake... Did pretty good. And that stock filter did... You see that? Not half bad, yeah. <laughs> oh god. Ugh. Oh. Oh, now I can taste it. I can taste like... All the places that we've been wheeling. <laughs> For the last like several months. Yeah. So as for the catch can, I've been emptying this thing about every four to five tanks of gas. I know we haven't shown you guys every single time, but I just wanted to make sure it was consistent. And of course, now that we're pulling the whole Jeep apart to do this awesome turbo upgrade, I want to show you it's the same every time. So it's filled up to about here. And the reason I think it stops right here each time is because if you look, that's about where the filter stops. So once it's pretty much clogged, that's kind of where it stops. But that's where I'm at about every four to five tanks of gas. So let's pour it. Oh God. So that's all what your motor will be burning off. Now I know people say, oh, it's designed to burn it. That's fine, your motor can do it. I'd rather all that not be getting into my throttle body, coating the throttle body, the intake manifold, and burning off through the combustion system. Maybe that's what new vehicles are designed to do. I don't think it needs to be in there and this keeps it from going in there. So anyway, that's where we're at with that. What else do we got? The turbo, we're back to the turbo now. Well, let's go put the turbo on it. Now with all that out of the way, next up is installing this little T-fitting right there between the oil pressure sensor and the engine. This will of course provide lubrication for the turbo itself. So now we got the fuel rail out, we got the new FIC injectors going in the fuel rail, cleaning up all the manifolds and plenum. He's just applying a little lube on there, so they slide right in. Is that rail plastic? Mm -hmm. Wow, they couldn't even spring for aluminum rail, huh? I guess if it works, it works. Yeah. So after you have the injectors attached back to the lower plenum, you'll reinstall that back on top of the motor. They are doing their due diligence and cleaning out all the crud that's been building up for the past year. Now at this point, normally reinstalling the lower intake manifold and the plenum would be your next step. However, since Kevin and I have about 30-ish thousand miles or so on our JL already, we figured we'd go ahead and swap out the spark plugs because you do have to take that intake manifold off to change out the spark plugs anyways. And we don't want to have to deal with that later. So while it's there and it's easy to get to, we're going to do it now. Right? Right. Right. Don't, don't worry, the, the motor's going to blow up well before we need new spark plugs. So there you go. <laughs> Get your old plug and your new plug. We're going ahead and swapping out these fittings on the transmission cooler because the kit does come with brand new AN fittings. And it is important to note, however, removing the factoring fittings can be a little bit sketchy. Yeah, we tried using a big breaker bar to break them free and it was kind of just bending everything. So what we did was put an impact on it, gave it a little zap, it broke them right free. So I would go with the impact method and just kind of Give Once little, you have the intake and everything out of there, fitting an impact 
back there is actually not as hard as you think it would be. Okay, so now that we've got the brand new spark plugs in, next up is removing the automatic transmission lines, which as you all know, we're running the metal cloak under cloak skids. So we do have to remove the engine skid in order to get to those lines. Are you trying to kick me? No. Thank you. Oh God! Oh. Are you filming that? Did you get that? I did. Did you get that? I almost got you. You came really close. <laughs> that was almost a complete reenactment of the freaking hydro assist. All right, so next we're gonna remove the factory exhaust. You can see we already removed the crossover pipe here. We did have to remove some of the undercloak skids. So that's on the ground, so we have access up underneath. We also had to pull the fender flares so we can get to the exhaust manifold bolts, as well as your oxygen sensor right here. So we're gonna get to work pulling that off and uh, get the downpipes on. This was actually just two bolts to remove and then the bottom slips into a clamp that holds it on. So that actually made it pretty simple. All this is going pretty dang quick and easy. Don't jinx it. Now with the factory exhaust removed, we also have to replace the factory oil pan because... Because... That little guy right there. What they did is they welded an AN fitting into the bottom of the oil pan. So that they provide. So the turbo gets oil pressure in through the top of the turbo and all that oil's gotta go somewhere. So that drains back into the oil pan where then it's picked up by the oil pump and pumped back to your motor again. So rather so, than having to modify your own oil pan, they just give you one with all that's already done. Yep. Look at that. Super easy. So at this point, we'll be modifying the vacuum pump, specifically replacing the factory hose with a supplied one and rotating the connector 180 degrees. And after that, we get to install all of that beautiful ceramic coated turbocharger tubing. Ah! got this portion installed next is routing our o2 sensor wires which as you can see we went super fancy and wrapped the wires in some heat wrapping so they gave us these oxygen sensor extensions so this wiring is going to plug in behind the catalytic converter so you're going from two catalytic converters to one high flow right here and so both oxygen sensors for both banks is going to be right back behind here so we're gonna go ahead and route this up over the transmission and plug it into where it normally plugs in up top. So that worked out perfect. Able to route it mostly away from the exhaust piping. And then this one goes up over the transmission and the other one goes up and plugs in right up there. Now we also have to modify the cooling fan just a teensy bit to make sure we have enough room for the choo-choo snail which means we get to pull out some cutting tools. And speaking of cutting tools, Kevin is actually doing something we've been meaning to do for a really long time now. And that is making our factory Rubicon hood vents actually functional. Because if you didn't realize it, they're pretty useless when it comes to actually dissipating heat out of the engine bay. They're mostly for looks. But now, look at that. You just cut the back off. And finally, the turbo gets to go in. Dun, 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 Like a glove. Almost. Get the hammer. We need a sawzall, a hammer, and a cutting torch. So we've already put the entire turbo together, all the hoses and the fittings necessary, and we've mocked it up to make sure that it's all oriented the way that it needs to be. So hopefully this will go in and stay in. We won't need to make any more adjustments. Now 
Now at this point, while the rest of the hoses and the clamps and the pipes are all put into their designated place, technically the instructions say at this point that you should remove all of the grill inserts of your factory grill. But I'm not okay with that. We're not okay with that. I it don't doesn't remove that. It doesn't look very good in our personal opinion. So we are going to attempt to work around this. So according to the instructions, you should remove all of these tabs, remove the grill inserts because you have clearance issues with these guys right here. But instead of doing that, what we're gonna do instead is just remove these little tabs because as you can see, there's still plenty of screws holding these grill inserts down and we're just gonna grind these down. And hopefully by grinding these down, we'll still be able to maintain the grill inserts without clearance issues. Bam! So we left last night with the Jeep completely set, ready to go to accept the PCM and get that reinstalled this morning when it arrived. And while Kevin and I were sleeping, Rock Your 4x4 went above and beyond because not only A, did they get the PCM installed, but the only issue that we've had with this entire install is that the exhaust system didn't work with our metal cloak under cloak skid system. We had kind of some bracketry fitment issues. And these guys already took care of that because they're, I mean, genuinely that bad. Look at this. So this bracket normally came over and then down to hook up here, but the exhaust pipe is now in the way from the, from the down pipe. So they actually flatten this piece completely out and they have a press brake here where they actually re-bent the entire piece to fit around the exhaust. And if we ever need to pull it off, we can still just unbolt it and remove it. Same thing with this side. It used to go to the front mount here and tuck around, but of course this pipe is completely in the way. <laughs> I didn't think, I thought we were gonna only have to run with one bracket and that would be the driver's side bracket. We didn't think but there'd be a way somehow, around that. They somehow were able to bend it, snake it inside the exhaust pipe. It's not touching and, and coming over. Also, they clearance the front of it for me because we have the oil drain. So they clearance the front of it for us so it wasn't sitting there next because to the oil drain. this right here was super close. Yeah, so if I was to hit this and push it up, it might've actually hit that and broke that open. Lastly, lastly, the most like awesome thing that I think we need to get a roll of is look at all this heat shield tape. They went through and they took every coolant line, oil line, wire, everything under here and they put heat shielding around all of it. Can you see all this up here? Look at this. All of those coolant lines, they went well above and beyond to make sure that anything that came even remotely close to this turbocharger piping was wrapped and protected with heat shielding. Basically what I'm saying here is that if you guys live in the Tennessee area or any of the surrounding states and you have a four wheel drive vehicle. Or you like horsepower. Or you like horsepower. Or you like horsepower. Because they do do motor swaps as well this is the place to go. Big axles, a built transfer case, and a built transmission going into a CJ7. You've also got an LS3 swap, 40s, one tons, coilovers, a long arm suspension, basically everything you could put on your modification wish list on this JK. And of course, you've got Jesse and Jason's personal Jeeps, which they wheel just as hard, if not harder, than Kevin and I wheel the stepchild. And if you don't believe me, you can actually check them out on their YouTube channel, Rock Your 4x4, which I'll leave a link in the description for along with their actual website. That way, if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to them personally. This shop, Rock Your 4x4, is amazing. And I don't know if you guys have kind of noticed as we've done this, but the shop's also immaculate. And the guys here are incredible. They're super nice. And obviously, Freaking they do awesome. a freaking fantastic so job. Thing. Let's fire this thing up. I know, we're All ready. Right. So at All this right, point, they've, they've literally, they're 100% ready at this point to, to start the Jeep. Fingers crossed. All right, so the oil's in it. We've got coolant somewhat in it. We're waiting. The ECU's in. They just loaded the tune from HP Tuners that we got from Prodigy. And we're going for a first start. So let's see how this thing fires up. It's got all the new injectors new fluids so uh this is a big thing let's see let's see what happens let's go ahead and hit it let's start it hasn't <laughs> exploded yet let's start it So we gotta run it for about 10 minutes, let everything warm up. We're logging all that. We're gonna send that 10 minute idle log to Prodigy. They're gonna look it over, make sure everything looks right. 
and then they'll send us back another tune that we can go drive it on. All right, what's the next step? Going for a drive. All right, go, we're going to run it 25%, 50 75 and then open for just a couple seconds. See where it's at, and, oh, then, yeah. and then make sure everything looks good still, right? Yeah, and do burnouts. Don't do that yet, please. <laughs> How's it feel? It feels good. It feels really good. That's uh, that's pretty fun. No warning lights. Nothing's no. grenaded or anything. The, I got the traction control light off. Yeah. Yeah. No, no check engine lights. It's running great. Sounds great. Sounds good. Yeah. So installation wise, we're good, solid, done. I think. I, yeah. No oil leaks. No exhaust leaks. No nothing. We're gonna send the logs in. They're gonna look them over. Make sure it's good. What do you think of the installation? Uh, the Prodigy kit was nice. Uh, instructions were very informative. Fit and finish was good. Now we're just waiting on our new tune and see how it does. I mean, right. we didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to modify or do anything really. I nope. mean, the only oh. modifications we had to do was to pre-existing aftermarket parts. <laughs> yeah. So, so we went over some of that. The skid, he's the one that straightened everything out and then rebent everything to Which fit. Which you did an awesome job doing because um, it looks, I mean, Honestly, like we never touched yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's great. I just flexed it out up there. It clears. Cleared. Good. So it looks like we're turbocharged. We're flexed out. I, I don't know what else other than we need like something with the rear axle. We need some rear axle shafts, but nobody has them yet. I want to go. I want to go get on the highway and go have some fun <laughs> with this thing. All right, go for it. boost starts to build it just breaks them free and that's it oh my not God. that i'm gonna be doing burnouts and i know that was weak but i'm not trying to burn off my tires and we're not trying to explode anything yeah that, it'll be fine everything's built no the rear axle's not rear axle there's not. nothing done to the rear axle nope hey look at our new razor cover we did get a new razor cover you guys with our loma trailer with our turbocharged jeep now i know what you're all thinking why a turbo you guys are nuts why not a supercharger especially since superchargers are so prevalent in the jeeping community in the off-roading world but you got to remember kevin and i aren't really from the off-roading world originally we come from a world where turbo noises are the sound of angels and they're extremely freaking reliable i know <laughs> but for real turbos are really reliable in the drifting community and we've been using them and working with them for years so it's really not all that surprising that we want to throw one in the jeep i mean the factory uses turbos, right? Jeep Manufacturers use turbos. Jeep has a two liter turbo. So, so there's got to be something to it, right? Yeah. So with that in mind and the turbo noises and all things holy that are turbos, we are taking as many precautions as we can to make sure that this is a reliable as possible setup. Although the Prodigy kit does come with a tune, Kevin and I are getting a fully custom tune yeah. made. HP Tuners ha has a software for the tuning and it allows so many parameters, every, every single type of parameter you need to make a safe tune. So they're meeting us at DBR in Nashville, Tennessee. Which is where, where we're heading which is right where, now. That's where we're headed. And tomorrow we're gonna put it on a dyno and we're gonna have them do a custom tune for our Jeep and simulating load with pulling the trailer, mountains, all that kind of stuff so that we know we're 100% set. Why turbo? Why not turbo? <laughs> <laughs> I love that noise so much. All right, so I've got to give one more shout out, huge thank you to Rock Your 4x4 for all of the work that they knocked out on the Rubicon, the stepchild. Anyways, you guys, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And remember, you can always find your Light Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com. And you can find all of your Light Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. We love you, and we will see you in Nashville. We'll see you guys in Nashville. <laughs> Dino time, baby. <laughs>
She climbed into my lap. Watch this. Shelly, come here. Come here. Come on. What's up, ma'am? Oh, come on. Go. Traction, bite, baby, bite, <laughs> bite. <laughs> Let her eat. <laughs> oh, Lord. All the kisses. You know she just got done eating poop, right? I'm sure. I saw her eating poop. That would not surprise me now at all. Now she's licking your face. Unfortunately. Oh. Yo. Yo.